life of the scientist and engineer is a dedicated life to which the man brings his devoted interest, his knowledge, his experience, and focuses them on the challenges of the time. And to work at his best, he needs an environment which stimulates his interest and provides him with the many facilities necessary to bring his ideas to completion. The result is the modern industrial laboratory. When the Bell Laboratories at Murray Hill, New Jersey was built more than 20 years ago, this campus plan was an advanced progressive departure from the common practice of the day. But ideas about laboratories have kept pace with advancing times. And when the need arose, these, the newest concepts were searched for and incorporated in the Bell Laboratory structure at Homedale, New Jersey. How do you decide where to locate a new building? Homedale was chosen for a number of reasons. First, it is near enough to other facilities of the laboratories to make contact between them easy, and yet far enough away to avoid undesirable concentration of facilities. The surrounding area is a good place to live in. It is close to the shore, and its rural charm is still intact. Bell Laboratories knew this area well, for here since 1929, it has maintained a group of buildings where research in radio and high frequency communication was carried on and radio astronomy was born. Aero Saarinen was selected as the architect to translate the criteria established by Bell Laboratories into a modern functional building of advanced design. Saarinen created a bold new plan for a development center quite different from other facilities of this type. With Western Electric directing the overall program of engineering and construction, work began with test borings to sample the nature of the subsoil. And then one day in August 1959, the big machines moved in and began to transform the landscape. Because of the nature of the subsoil, creosoted wooden piles were driven into the ground to form a solid, firm base for the concrete superstructure. The Hendrick Hendrickson House, which stood on this site since 1730, was donated to the Monmouth Historical Society and relocated on a nearby site. A full-scale mock-up of part of the new building was constructed at Murray Hill. Here, Bell Laboratories plant engineering people were able to study design details and to test materials before they were committed to the final structure. At the building site, tons and tons of concrete were being poured to shape the skeleton of the structure. Many men applied their different skills to the job, and great quantities of all sorts of material were delivered for the task ahead. One day the flag was flown to signify that the pouring of the concrete was complete. This was indeed a milestone in the construction. For now, the glass skin of the building could be applied, and the interior work could proceed on schedule. This was the time for all sorts of detailed work. 
the laying of the granite steps and walks. The setting of the precast concrete grating over the air intake and exhaust chamber. The bush hammering of the concrete on the service cores to give it a decorative surface like this. The construction of the water tower. And the installation of the glass panels which would completely enclose the structure. On the interior, the court began to assume its final form. And then one day, in the late fall of 1961, the glass was all in place, and the building was almost ready for occupancy. It wasn't long before furniture was stacked up, ready to go into labs and offices as they were completed. and people began moving in while the work continued in the uncompleted sections. At about the same time, the old Homedell buildings were raised, and researchers moved into this new facility a mile and a half away below Crawford Hill, where stand the antennas used for Echo and Telstar. In June 1962, Homedell, as planned for the present, was completed. It is a six-story structure consisting of two sections joined by a central court. This is the entrance lobby and reception area. Looking to the rear of the court and up, the glass covering the area creates an interesting pattern. On the inside of the glass exterior walls and running completely around the building are the main corridors for each floor. This is where the main traffic flows. Coming off these corridors are cross aisles which go completely across the building. Along here are the offices and laboratories. On this plan view of one building, the main corridors are here, the cross aisles here. This arrangement gives the groups of engineers the utmost privacy. All lighting is by artificial means, and the building is completely air conditioned. Each floor of each section consists of six main laboratory and office bays. Between the bays are service cores which provide gas, electricity, and water to the laboratories. These cores are accessible through doors opening from the main corridors. The walls within a bay are movable, and the size of offices and labs can be varied to suit the needs as they arise. Here is a typical private office with its built-in bookcases, files, and wardrobe. Here, a bay has been left open as a drafting room. And here, walls have been removed to enlarge a laboratory to meet its expanding needs. Conference rooms are located along the ends of each section. A technical library serves the many and varied needs of the engineers. 